man took from nature sustainably and also returned to nature with foresight about the planet's future the world would be a better place dada ji i am so glad we have come here to vinod chacha's agri tourism village there is so much to see all around look at chotu prancing about like those lambs in that pen he too is very happy hey chotu stop chasing those hens i know you are only teasing them but vinod chacha will chase us out of here if you frighten them those hens sheep cows and all the farm animals are our friends yes chotu this village is an agri tourism village to show the people from urban areas especially those from the big busy cities how they can rediscover their rural roots to make people realize how we can all live in harmony with nature just like man did in ancient times dada ji vinod chacha is very busy showing all the other visitors around since you know so much why don't you tell me your stories about all that is happening here in this very interesting farm look even chotu is wagging his tail he too loves your stories <laughs> There is so much happening here. Where shall I begin? Shall we begin with this little chick? It feels like a soft toy. Ah, poultry farming is carried out in all countries because eggs and chicken are consumed by most people. But you may have noticed here that the birds are allowed to roam about freely unlike in other poultry farms where the hens are all cramped up in confined spaces here the birds are leading a more natural life picking at any insects they may find on the ground and also being fed grain from that big pan by visitors Kunti runs to a big pan containing bird feed and tosses some to the birds. <laughs> What fun! All the hens, cocks and chicks are making a beeline for the feed, jostling with each other. They all look very plump and well fed. When the hens lay eggs, we know Chacha's helpers collect some of them leaving the rest to be incubated by the hens and hatch into more chicks out of the collected eggs some may be used to serve as meals for the visitors to this farm and some are sold in the market where are the eggs can we have a look at their nests are they in the chicken coop yes as you can see There are several nests in special enclosures here in the coop. Some of the hens are in their nests incubating their eggs. And the other hens appear to be taking a break from incubating. They must have gone out there to have their breakfast of bird feed or maybe chat with the other birds. Ay yo, the eggs feel quite warm. At night, the helpers round off the birds, making sure that they are all safe in their coops they do not want to take chances with hungry predators like jackals who may sneak into the farm while the hens are sleeping so keeping poultry in this manner is a fine example of man taking from nature earning a little income for himself and at the same time ensuring that the poultry birds too live their life quite freely in a natural manner we know chacha seems to have quite a few cows too i can hear them although we too 
have a gaushala back at home i would still like to show you vinod chacha's huge stable look some of the visitors are milking the cows they seem to be quite thrilled back at home i often help pitaji milk our cow sita yes milking a cow is nothing new for us but for the big city people it is a novelty dada ji is that person a vet he is giving that cow some injection yes kunti the vet is administering meloxicam to lakshmi poor cow she is now quite old and is probably suffering from pain in her limbs is meloxicam meant to relieve pain if chotu ever feels pain in his old age we will give him meloxicam right away yes meloxicam is now used in place of diclofenac at one time all the farmers were using diclofenac for their cattle but when the cattle ultimately died and their dead bodies were eaten by vultures the vultures too began dying how come was the diclofenac still there in the bodies of the cattle did diclofenac harm the vultures bilkul sahi the vultures would have become extinct if the environmentalists hadn't found out on time what was wrong the government banned diclofenac in veterinary medicine and it was replaced by meloxicam a harmless medicine but dada ji how were the vultures saved from extinction i am coming to that scientists began breeding vultures in captivity in a rescue center in pinjore once the vultures born there grew old enough to fend for themselves they were released into the wild wow this is an example of how man has helped nature yes my dear kunti there are other stories too of how man has helped nature by helping species revive and come back from the brink of extinction lakshmi i am sure you will feel fine with that injection of meloxicam dada ji maybe now go to the apiary where we no charge us rearing bees i would like to see the hives it is very interesting to see how artificial hives are made for the bees in the apiary but first we shall have to wear the special suits they give us to make sure we are well covered and do not get stung by the bees i hope they have a special suit of the right size for chotu too as you can see there are a lot of wild flowers growing all around to provide enough nectar for the worker bees not only do they carry nectar from the flowers back to the hive but also pollen in special pollen baskets on their hind legs this pollen they convert into bee bread for their young ones and what about the nectar how does it turn into honey there are worker bees in the hive who drink the nectar and then secrete enzymes in their bodies that turn the nectar into honey the wonder food they then regurgitate or bring out the honey once again this they store in the hexagonal cells in the special frames in the artificial hives the honey is meant to be fed to the bee larvae but the apiarists collect some from time to time to sell in the market leaving enough for the bees i find bees so amazing and keeping an apiary is again an example of man taking from nature for his needs but taking sustainably isn't it you are right bilkul sahi also this is a fine example of making sure 
the bees continue to thrive on our planet. In many places, farmers and horticulturists have been using chemical pesticides so lavishly that all the bees are dying out. Bees are the most important pollinating agents. It is only after pollination that flowers can turn into fruits. That includes the crops in our fields too. If bees become fewer and fewer in number, the world will starve. I am sure the bees must be pollinating the flowers of the fruits and vegetables in Vinod Chacha's kitchen garden too. Both the fruits and veggies in his kitchen garden look so healthy. Those must be other wild bees, not the ones from the apiary. And Dadaji here too, in the kitchen garden and in the fields. Vinod Chacha's helpers must be watering their fields by drip irrigation to save on water like we do back home, isn't it? Ha, Kunti. Not only do they practice drip irrigation to save water, but also Vinod Chacha practices crop rotation, which means he does not grow the same crop year after year, or else the nutrients in the fields would all get used up. And then nothing would grow, right? So which crops could he be growing? In the rainy season, from June to October, he grows kharif crops like rice, millet and maize. Then, in winter, the rabi crops like oats, wheat, barley and mustard are grown. In summer, around April-May, he grows zaid crops like pumpkin, bitter gourd and cucumber. Wow! So much biodiversity in the crops! And all the tourists who come here get to enjoy so many different kinds of meals. In between these three main crops, Vinod Chacha also makes it a point to grow pulses and green peas. As these plants have nitrogen-fixing bacteria living in their roots and convert the nitrogen in the air into nitrogenous compounds like nitrates which can be easily absorbed by the roots. Plants need nitrogen to be healthy and build up proteins. Dadaji, when we go back home, I am going to explain to Pitaji all that I have learned here in this agritourism village so that we can also have so many varieties of foods growing in our fields without ruining the health of the soil. It is also the best way to live off the earth without harming the earth. A fine example of living sustainably. Dadaji, can you tell me another story of how people have been taking care of nature? Don't you also want one, Chotu? <laughs> <laughs> My dear Kunti, you ask for so many stories. My stock of stories will soon get exhausted. But I can feel a story popping out of my head just for you. It is about the Bishnois of Rajasthan. Bishnois? Who are they? The Bishnois community of Rajasthan worship nature. They consider the Khejri tree which is found most commonly there and the black bucks, the most beautiful antelopes also found there as sacred. No one is allowed to cut down these trees or harm the black buck. In fact, young black bucks who may have accidentally lost their mothers are nursed by the Bishnoi women. I think we should all worship nature, not destroy it thoughtlessly. Nature provides us with so many things. Also, India is the land of sacred groves. And there are lots of them in Rajasthan. Sacred groves? What are they? It is a grove of trees 
that is considered as extremely holy. They even have a temple devoted to a deity in the midst of a sacred grove. The deity may be anything connected to Mother Earth, even a termite mound. No one is allowed to cut a single branch of any tree in a sacred grove. If it is an undisturbed place of the forest, there must be so much biodiversity there, no? And now, another success story has popped up in my head for you. The story of the Olive Ridley Turtles. Where do you get to see these Olive Ridley Turtles? In Gahir Matha Beach of Odisha, every year, the female Olive Ridley Turtles arrive in thousands after swimming miles and miles of sea to nest and lay eggs. You mean they come to the beach every year? How do they find their way? That is the amazing part. Scientists believe they have tiny magnetic particles in their brain, which pick up the Earth's magnetism, just like the way sailors used to find their way at sea, by using compasses that had a magnetic needle. At the beach, these turtles dig their nests in the sand and lay eggs. Each turtle may lay a hundred or more eggs. When the baby turtles hatch, they crawl back to the sea, guided by the shimmering light from the water. But here lies the problem. What problem? Nowadays, we find buildings and roads constructed right next to the beach. The hatchlings get drawn to this brighter light of the city. And they can get lost or crushed by the moving cars? Not only that, but also they get picked up and eaten by birds, stray dogs and humans too. Oh no! But awareness began spreading when each year people began seeing fewer and fewer of these turtles. To ensure the hatchlings make it back safely to their home, the sea, volunteers are stationed nowadays at the nesting site. When the baby turtles hatch, the volunteers carry them into the sea. I wish I too could one day volunteer to help the Olive Ridleys. I will make sure all those hundreds of hatchlings make it safely to their home, the sea. But even if all of them make it to the sea, not all of them survive. I suppose the big fish must be eating them, right? Dadaji, it is so good to hear these stories about man protecting nature, as ultimately, it is nature we depend on. But I need to know stories about people not living sustainably also. Only if we know what is going wrong, can we take measures to correct it. Well said, child. This happens when the population of a place increases and there are more hungry mounts than the place can provide for. In the northeastern states like Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland and Meghalaya, where there are lots of jungles, the people have been carrying out the practice of jhum cultivation or slash and burn since a long time. In this method of farming, they clear a patch of forest by cutting down the trees and burning them just before the monsoons. After the first shower of rain, they plant all kinds of seeds. Do they keep cutting down the forests for this kind of farming? Yes, after a few cycles, when the soil loses its fertility, they slash and burn another part of the forest. On and on it goes. Earlier, when there were not so many people and the forests were dense, it did not matter. And after a few years, the abandoned patch would revive. But now when more and more people are doing this, the forests are shrinking 
and valuable trees are being lost. And what about all the animals? Yes, a lot of animals are losing their homes. Without their homes, they just cannot survive. Elsewhere, in South America, West Africa, some islands of Malaysia and Indonesia, huge tracts of forests are being cut down to make way for rubber and palm oil plantations, as these trees fetch a lot of money. Palm oil is used not only for cooking, but also in many manufactured products, from lipsticks to shampoos to even ice creams. But the people do not realize that the trees they have been cutting are of far more value. They forget that these trees absorb pollution, prevent global warming, and give us precious oxygen to breathe. I wish people would not be greedy for money. Our planet has so much natural wealth, but we are not using it wisely. I shall make some posters when we get back home to remind people of their duty to nature. And so, Kunti, on returning home, makes posters and puts them up all over town. Please remember, to follow the three R's. Reduce, reuse and recycle. It will go a long way in helping our planet and us. Please avoid using non-biodegradable articles and packaging. It can cause a lot of harm to all living things on land and in the oceans. Please avoid consuming too much. Give back to nature what you take from nature. Live sustainably. Let man be one with nature in harmony with all the creatures. Let man be one with nature. Is dharti ki raksha karo. This is the way to go. This is the way to go. This is the way to go for a better planet, you know. Sambhalo peda pode ko, sambhalo peda pode ko, sambhalo peda pode ko. Pashu pakshi ka dhyan rakho. Let man be one with nature, let man be one with nature, let man be one with nature. इस धरती की रक्षा करो